Damn, I mixed up these strings here. I should add a unit test for this. Oh wait, there's a better way. So what happened? This project uses NDPen to analyze the code structure of some software. In this particular line, we want to create the relevant type information, like assembly, namespace, and type name from the NDPen data structure, and create our own data structure to keep our business logic free from any dependencies to the NDPen APIs. Our own data structure we have well designed. The constructor uses design by contract to ensure that only valid instances can be created. The link to this contract class you can find in the description below the video. And it is also immutable so that once created, it cannot be invalidated accidentally later on. All this design effort did not protect me from mixing up the string parameters of the constructor. And this is exactly what happened here. And the design can also not protect me from accidentally mixing up the properties later on when passing one of those to a function which only requires that particular information from the data structure. And the reason is that the design does not express the semantics of those parameters and properties explicitly. As handy as strings are, strings can pretty much represent anything from a name to an URL or a huge JSON object. This flexibility comes with the drawback that a design built on strings is not able to catch such errors we just discovered. So what do we do? Of course we could add some unit tests to ensure that we use the right strings at the right place. But I think there is a better way. I would prefer fixing our design by making it more explicit and more expressive. Let's simply create dedicated small types representing the semantical meaning of each of those strings. Once instances of the assembly type, the namespace type, or the type name type are properly created, those cannot be mixed up when used later on. Not when being passed to the code type constructor, and also not when passing individual properties of the code type to other functions. Of course, these new types can still be created from the wrong string, but creating the assembly type, for example, and passing a variable named namespace is a much more obvious mistake than mixing up the order of three string parameters, which will be easily spotted in every code review. So the risk of such type of errors is not completely gone, but it is drastically reduced. How do we create such types like the assembly type? The most basic implementation of such types could simply look like this. We use design by contracts again to ensure only valid instances can be created, and we make the type immutable and provide access to the actual values through a property. Now there are two aspects to consider. First, we want value semantics. This type is a class, which means it is a reference type. That means, when comparing two instances of this type, effectively the references of those instances are compared, not their values. And that means two instances of this type created from the same string are not considered as to be the same. This design is not very convenient to use. So we should fix it by implementing the required compare functions and operators explicitly. Some languages support custom value types directly or special reference types with value type semantics by default. In modern c -sharp, we would use the record keyword to convert our class into a reference type with value type semantics and so simplify the implementation a lot. The second design aspect we should consider is how do we provide access to the value of such types? The simplest option is the one we have chosen so far. A property provides direct access to the value. Of course, this design also has drawbacks. It does not provide a strong encapsulation and still supports functions which take strings while we actually wanted to achieve the opposite, which is banning strings wherever possible so that those cannot be mixed up. Furthermore, having to call dot value whenever we need to access the value, for example, to print it on the console is not very convenient. We can fix this smell by providing an operator which does the conversion to string implicitly. So now we can pass an instance of this type to any function which accepts a string and the compiler will do the conversion automatically for us. But still the smell of weak encapsulation remains. We could fix this by following a more functional programming approach, which is providing dedicated higher order functions to work with this assembly type. With this design, the direct access to the value is removed and all operations on the actual value of the assembly type are encapsulated within the assembly type. This is a pretty common design tactic in functional programming languages, but certainly not so common in object-oriented programming languages. Which design would you prefer in your projects? Let me know in the comments below. That's all. Is it worth the effort? Probably not in all cases, but the bigger a code base is, the more important such design tactics become.
And especially in the domain model, this design can help to get more type safe and more expressive code and so can help to avoid bugs. You are interested in taking this idea even further? Then watch this video now.